Okay, it's time to get things started. Oh, wait a minute, actually, hold on. <laughs> that would be important to actually get a better mic uh, feed right there. So let's see, do we have anybody that's on board? Do we have anybody that is alive? Ah, okay, so uh, let's see now. Yes, okay, everything is working, everybody is alive, so now we can officially get things started. Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting round of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, where this time we have a lot of uh, big stories that happen right now, and we got a lot of exciting news of uh, animation stuff that has happened during the week. Now, first and foremost, I would like to discuss about uh, something that's a little bit unusual with uh, this round right over here, which is the fact that I am starting a little bit earlier than before. So, some of you might be wondering, why is it that I'm starting this at 1 p.m. Eastern instead of 2 p.m. Eastern as usual? Well, here's the thing. Uh, the big reason is actually because um, at 3 I have to leave. That's why, considering that these things usually go for more than an hour, I decided to start it an hour earlier because at 3 o'clock, I cannot be here. I have to go and go check out an early screening to Hotel Transylvania 3. Yes, I managed to get myself some tickets for that. And, uh, which, for those of you who watch my videos, yes, that actually does mean that I'll be able to have a review of the movie to be ready and be released on the movie's release date on July 13th. So, that is probably something that you can look forward to. And as for me right now, I just gotta say that, honestly, on the inside, when it comes to Hotel Transylvania and the fact that I am gonna go see the movie early, well, honestly, I feel equally as excited as Dracula in this picture right here. <laughs> Honestly, I just find this picture to be absolutely perfect. This pretty much summarizes my whole thought on the Hotel Transylvania franchise in general. Just this freaking face right over here. And honestly, that's how I feel right now going to see another freaking Hotel Transylvania film. Honestly, I just find this perfect. I'm definitely going to be using this for my thumbnail. I mean, it's just, it, it's the perfect summary of just my thoughts on Hotel Transylvania. So yeah, um, that's pretty much uh, my that that's pretty much the reason why I am doing this uh, earlier, and uh, why I got a screening to Hotel Transylvania early. So uh, with that, all that said, uh, that pretty much clears off uh, what is going on. So uh, so is everybody ready to go and get things started on today's episode of Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast? Uh, just want to see if everybody is ready. Uh, I know Dracula, well, he doesn't seem to be ready. Well, he's not ready for his third movie either, so... Okay, let's see. Alright, every- okay, we see people are ready. Yes, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, we are all ready, we are all set. And unfortunately, I have to say, though, that we are going to be starting off on a bit of a low note. Uh, the thing is, is that... There was actually a major piece of news that actually just came out and it's something that we haven't thought about in a while but it pretty much came out right of left field and the more that you think about it, yeah, the more that it does make sense to just let it go. And what I'm talking about, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the death of Disney Toon. Yes, uh, Disney Toon Studios has officially shut down. Disney has officially made the announcement that they are no longer going to be uh, continuing the studio right now. And of course, um, as you guys probably know, this is the same studio that has made uh, not only the Planes movies, but of course also many of the Tinkerbell movies that would be released uh, straight to DVD. Now, I just want to go and start things off by saying that uh, when it comes to the reason why they're shutting down, a lot of people have been speculating 
for different reasons as to why specifically. Some are saying that, oh, well, it's because of the uh, new announcement that John Lasseter is leaving Disney and he's going to be replaced by Pete Docter and Jennifer Lee. And others are saying that they're shutting this down because they want to try to go and make room for Fox because now it's starting to be a lot more official that Disney is purchasing the entertainment asset of 21st Century Fox since they are trying to clear some things and that their Disney is selling off any of the Fox Sports assets to like Rupert Murdoch and the whole gang and just like trying to get rid of that because Disney already owns ESPN. But that's not necessarily the case. It even says so in my source here in IndieWire where it actually states, um, where would it be? Uh, in re no, it's not, oh, fudge, not it. Where, where, where is it? Like, I know it actually says something that it doesn't have to do with anything here. Uh, or I think, no, nah, I don't know. It, it, it said, okay, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I'm not sure. All right. Oh, no. Up, 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 up. Here it is. Okay, yeah. Um, as much consider... Here, here we go. Okay. After much consideration, we have made the decision to end production activity and close Disney Toon Studios, says a Disney spokesperson. The move has been in the works and is unrele unrelated to the promotions of Dr. and Lee. Also, on top of that, though, um, even though they are shutting down Disney Toons and it is uh, some major news right over there, there is a bit of bad news that would also come with it, is that, unfortunately, the project that they were working on, uh, which is another plane spinoff film, not, uh, another spinoff of Cars, I mean, um, which in this one, I, I don't think it's another planes movie, but it's one that is actually set in space. Uh, the problem with that is that now they officially decided to cancel the project altogether and the worst news that came out of this unfortunately is that uh, as it states in uh, my source here there will be layoffs of 75 animators and staff and it is unclear if any will be transitioned to either Disney or Pixar so yeah unfortunately there are a lot of these people that are going to um, lose their jobs because of this decision. Now, with all that said, though, um, it's actually very interesting when it comes to uh, talking about Disney Toon Studios because they actually do have quite a significant history when it comes to Disney animation because um, they haven't always been known as just Disney Toon because... Uh, this is actually the studio, not only have they done stuff like Tinkerbell and Planes, but this is the studio that is actually responsible for many of the direct-to-DVD Disney sequels. Yes, this is the company that is responsible for bringing them, like, one after another. But it, it's not all their, uh, anime, it, it's not all their animated works that are just released straight to DVD and straight to video and stuff like that. They did actually manage to get some theatrically released films. Uh, their first one ever that they worked on, which is, uh, DuckTales the Movie, Treasures of the Lost Lamp, that was theatrically released. Of course, uh, the cult classic, A Goofy Movie, they were also responsible for that. Uh, they also have a few others, like, uh, Return to Neverland and Jungle Book 2. That, for some reason, and... Um, even I'm surprised, I'm still kind of perplexed on how they managed to get it in theaters. Uh, those sequels actually managed to get released in theaters right there. Uh, there was also a few Winnie the Pooh movies as well that actually did get theatrically released. Uh, these include the Tigger movie, Piglet's Big movie, and also Pooh's Heffalump movie. And from there, like, they, they would continue doing what they'd done. And the reason why that they actually did stop making uh, Disney sequels in general, that is actually because of the transition of when Bob Iger was the new CEO of Disney and he decided to bring in Ed Catmull and John Lasseter to be the heads of Disney animation within the company and even purchasing Pixar. So they were both the heads of Pixar and Disney. And John Lasseter stepped in and he saw what was going on with Disney tunes and he immediately said, okay, that's it. We got to stop all sequels. Let's no longer make any of them. And they were, uh, and th at the time, they were in the works to make many more. In fact, uh, I'm using Wikipedia as a source, which I know it's not the best idea for a source, but uh, 
Like, uh, it's just to get a good summary of, like, everything that they have done in the history, like, just in a nutshell. Uh, but there was actually some plans that they were trying to do. They, they, like, there were actually a lot of animated sequels that they wanted to make that never saw the light of day. Apparently, when John Lasseter said, stop... Um, he actually stopped them from making any more sequels, which includes Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, Pinocchio, and the Aristocats. And I think I remember at one point they were actually planning a Dumbo 2, which honestly, I will admit, I think that's a great move for John Lasseter because these ideas for sequels, like with Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, Pinocchio, and Aristocats, they can range from, oh hell no, don't make a sequel to that, to, and also going, don't you even dare touch that priceless gem. I mean, you're touching a masterpiece right over there. Don't you dare even do that. So really, um, I think it was probably for the best. And uh, from there, uh, they, like, they were pretty much doing nothing but spinoffs. As you can see, like, right at the end of their history, all they've done is just, like, Tinkerbell movies and also planes. And that was pretty much it. And honestly, when you do look into their history and the amount of movies that they would publish, it's like, the more I see it, the more that it was actually pretty obvious that they were gonna go in the first place, that Disney Toons was actually a dying studio, despite the fact that they were making another uh, car spin-off film that would have been set in space. And I think the biggest indicator right over here is actually because of the Tinkerbell movies. Because you take a look at what they got here, and like with Tinkerbell, it's almost like annually that they would release Tinkerbell films. And with the exception of, tw of, uh, of, two of 2011 and 2013, they managed to successfully, like, release a Tinkerbell movie, like, non-stop. Like, you got Tinkerbell in 2008, uh, The Lost Treasure in 2009, The Great Fairy Rescue in 2010, and then, uh, well, 2011, I guess they had a break, uh, Secret of the Wings is from 2012, and then afterwards they got The Pirate Fairy in 2014, and then in 2015, which was their last animated film, by the way, that they've released, which was The Legend of the Never Beast. And that was actually a really big clue because they were pretty much dishing them out one by one. But then suddenly, after Legend of the Never Beast in early 2015, they didn't release anything since. They were only working on uh, like the upcoming uh, Cars spinoff film, and that was pretty much it. And you could tell that was a big red flag because... Like, it's not just with the Tinkerbell movies, but even back when they were just making, like, all these direct-to-video sequels, they were pretty much mass-producing animated films non-stop. Like, pretty much one after another. In fact, they would they can even go up to, like, four or even five animated features annually, just releasing them one by one. And suddenly, like, after 2015, they pretty much stopped. And I think that would have been a big indicator that they could like they can't even maintain making animated features anymore and i think there is uh probably one if i would have to guess onto one big reason as to why disney tunes would shut down in the first place and there are some people that did uh hint on that they did indicate on it it's honestly the fact that they no it's mainly because of dvd and blu-ray sales in this day and age, they're not what they used to be. And especially like with streaming services like Netflix and with uh, like digital downloads, like you can go and get them on iTunes or Google Play or on YouTube or anything like that. Now that you can go and get movies digitally, the the pri you know, the the sales on those DVDs and on those movies, they're not as strong as what they used to be. It's not like the days when they had Disney sequels and they can just dish them out one after another and they can make a strong profit out of it. Like those days are pretty much over and nowadays they can't even sustain even just like on streaming services or even on digital downloads alone because if you get them digitally, they are much, much cheaper than they would be if you get them on DVD or Blu-ray because, well, I guess that would depend on, 
what it could actually be uh, like it would probably depend on the film because of course you could just go and fish out you could fish out a dvd for like five bucks like in the bargain bin at walmart or something like that but in this case right over here um like it, it, it's a little bit different this is like that's pretty much their market and like if you get them digitally they cost like three or five bucks so they like and with disney and stuff like that they cannot sustain like that so really the demand is not as strong as what it used to be and also like continuously making these spin-off films and stuff like that they're not strong at the box office and they're not strong in terms of sales at all like not many people really want to have like these Tinkerbell movies anymore. Not many people want to have these car spin-off films. So really, there's just no point. And ultimately, it led to Disney to just let them go. I'm sure this was a decision that they thought about in a long, long time, considering that their last film was back in 2014, uh, 2015 with Legend of the Never Beast. Honestly, at that point, you could tell that I, I like afterwards they were considering it they they were honestly considering to let it go or not like maybe they had like one last chance to hold on to it with that plain spin-off film but like considering that they've done nothing afterwards yeah they they could tell that it's just something that they cannot sustain i'm sure this was even a discussion that they had back when the like back even before the whole john lasseter controversy or even long before Disney was considering to go and purchase Fox. So th this was something that I'm sure Disney was thinking about doing for a long time. And now it just doesn't seem to work anymore. Like the market is not what it used to be. And there's no longer a need to have this, uh, to have like a smaller animation studio within their division to go and create like these little animated features to profit off of like what little like what else that these franchises can hold they can no longer do that and especially when you do look at what disney and pixar is doing they're actually making their own sequels now like now like you look at pixar and you look at what disney is doing now they are a little more serious about making follow-ups, about making spin-offs, about making their own sequels. Like, you look at Disney right now, um, the movies that they have coming soon would include uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2, and also Frozen 2, which, if it were if it were a decade ago, they would have immediately handed over to Disney Toon in order for them to go and make it. And then you look at Pixar... Well, the thing is, throughout this entire decade, most of their movies is actually follow-ups and prequels and sequels and all that kind of stuff. We only have four original Pixar films this decade alone, and that's pretty much it. Like, we only had Brave, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, and Coco. And the rest, like, all the, like Cars 2 and 3, Toy Story 3 and 4, Incredibles 2, Finding Dory, uh, fudge, what else is there? Uh, Monsters University, all those are just follow-ups. Like they're all they're adding in to what they've already done before. So Disney is already making their own sequels. So there's no longer a need to have a smaller studio to make sequels for them. So like that that that's kind of the big reason as to why Disney Toon Studios is no longer functional. It, there's no longer a need to have a, a, a Disney Toon Studios because Disney is already making their own animation. You know, the, Disney is already making their own sequels. They're already making their own follow-ups. And on top of that, the market isn't what it used to be when it comes to DVD and Blu-ray sales. That and also, they just stop. And also, like, you look at their schedule, you look at their release dates on their movies and they just stop. They can't, like, this is a company that thrives on on mass producing animated films more than any other animation studio out there and when they stopped they couldn't do anymore so that's kind of the big thing with uh disney studios now the one thing i will say of course is that i do wish uh, the best of luck for the unfortunate artists animators and staff members that unfortunately lost their jobs 
uh, because of this decision. And I hope those 75 people uh, will be able to quickly find a brand new opportunity soon in order for them to survive and in order to get the, if some cash flowing. You know, I do wish them uh, the best of luck and hopefully they will find bigger and better opportunities from there. But uh, honestly, yeah, at the end of the day, it's probably for the best that we let go of Disney Tune. you know, like there's no longer a need for Disney Tune. We don't lo we no longer need to have any more of these planes or Tinkerbell movies and we don't need any more Disney sequels. I mean, that, that I, I think honestly, if we can end off on a high note, at least we're no longer going to be getting any more Disney sequels. So that, that's a good thing for them. But yeah, um, at the end of the day, I do wish the best of luck for um, the people who did get laid off. So with all that said and done, I would like to go ahead and pass on to the chat wall right over here. I want to know what do you guys think about the recent news about Disney Toon Studios shutting down. Are you glad that they are out, that they're no longer making more of these cheap, dumb sequels? Or are you going to be sad to see them leave? Are you sad that you're gonna go, that you'll see them go? Uh, I would like to know what you got. So uh, let me see what we got in the chat wall right over here. Uh, Disney Toons is now useless. I really feel sorry for the animators. I hope they find another job, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, oh, and I also see that there are a lot of people that uh, they are sh they are sharing their thoughts and they are sharing their memories of their favorite uh, Disney Toon Studios. I see like uh, uh, the Three Musketeers. That's that's a pretty good movie. Uh, you got the Tigger. I see the Tigger movie. Um, of course, uh, the Goofy uh, a Goofy movie. Uh, let's see. I ho I hope I wish for the best of the animators. What about Wreck It Ralph? Uh, have you seen Tinkerbell movie? Honestly, it's been too long for me to remember. So it's like technically yes, but uh, with my memory right now, no. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, like I said, Disney should take the opportunity to reach out to the indie market since those indie animator fans prefer to stream movies now. That could that that does sound an interest that sounds like an interesting idea, but um, that sounds like a big plan separately in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I see a lot of people do enjoy a lot more uh, people listing off their favorites. Uh, Pooh's Heffalump Halloween movie and Aladdin three. Oh, Aladdin, th Lion King one and a half and Aladdin three. Yeah. You know, honestly, if we are going to share uh, like fond memories, like it, admittedly for me, I mean, like when when it comes to the like the directed DVD Disney sequels, like, yeah, they do have a really bad reputation that a lot of them really do suck, but there are some significant ones. There are some that are actually pretty good. There are actually a lot of fun to watch. Like, um, like for me, I really do enjoy Aladdin and the King of Thieves. I actually do enjoy also, uh, the Lion King sequels like Lion King 2 and Lion King 1 and a half. Those were surprisingly a lot of fun. There are a few significant ones that really do stand out. But for the most part, admittedly, yeah, they can be pretty bad. And like I said, honestly, like maybe those canceled sequels would have turned out well. But, uh, oh, I also see some people are listing as well uh, Cinderella 3. But, on, but to be very honest, like it's honestly for the best that like we no longer have any more of these sequels considering they don't have a good track record. So I, I would be perfectly fine that we don't have any, you know, we wouldn't get a sequel to something like Pinocchio or Dumbo or the Aristocats or my God, if they made a sequel to uh, meet the Robinsons or free or chicken little Two. Oh God. Imagine if they did make a chicken little Two. Oh man, that that would be a whole nightmare and a half right there, especially with how the freaking uh, first movie was. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but honestly, yeah, um, it, it it is pretty sad to see Disney Toon Studios go, but overall, I think it's probably for the best. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and uh, move on to our next story right over here. And for our next story, this is not something that was officially mentioned by Disney. This is something that has been leaked and it has been going everywhere around the internet ever since it was first revealed. People are already going crazy 
for this brand new series and yet Disney said nothing about it and technically we shouldn't actually know about it but yet I do feel like this is something that would be pretty interesting to go and talk about. So with all that said let's go ahead and discuss about the legend of the three caballeros. Now for those of you who don't know, uh, Legend of the Three Caballeros is actually Disney's brand new animated series that is actually based on their 1944 animated film, The Three Caballeros. Now, it actually made its premiere around this week, or actually last week uh, specifically, where it actually made its premiere on the Disney Life app in the Philippines. And it's somehow just in that Asian market right over there that somehow it's only officially available for there. But um, yeah, they pretty much have this entire plot, which is actually based on the three caballeros. And uh, let me just read you the premise going in my source here from the Disney wiki. As it states, uh, dumped by his girlfriend, fired from his job, and newly homeless, hapless every man Donald Duck's fortune appears to flip when he when he inherits the dilapidated but antique engorsed estate of his great grandfather Clinton Coot, along with his fellow hares, the sly con man Jose Carioca and daredevil Hidalgo Pachito. Donald wasted no time in trying to profit from the hoard of priceless artifacts only to be dragged kicking and screaming into an immerse, uh, Im uh, dragged into an immense and deadly cosmic war. So the big thing about this entire series is that this is actually a reboot to the Three Caballeros, but it still stars the same characters. We still have uh, Donald Duck, Jose Carioca, and Pachiso Pistoles. But in this series right over here, he actually did change his name. It's no longer Pistoles. And uh, I think it's like Pachi... I, I, I don't really remember. Like, he has like a huge name, but uh, it's just... Uh, it's like... It's actually credited as just uh, Pachitos Gonzalez. In fact, um, we actually have a lot of things that have been revealed. Uh, just immediately when people first heard about what it is, soon afterwards, like, everything about it just ended up getting leaked. We saw the uh, new intro, we saw some clips, and then, like, it trickled down to just seeing entire episodes just uploaded online. And we even got more information about who is even among the cast. And in terms of voice actors, we do have a bit of a star-studded cast right there. And I think we'll go with, with uh, first and foremost, with the most obvious one, of course, Tony Anselmo, the man behind Donald Duck. Of course, he has to be Donald Duck because no one else has to be Donald Duck except for Tony Anselmo. But interestingly enough, we also got some brand new voices for um, Jose and Patito, where Eric Bauza is the new voice of Jose Carioca, and Jamie Camel is uh, Pachitos Gonzalez. Uh, we also got a few familiar faces and new characters as well, where we got Grey Griffin as Zandra, the goddess of adventure. We got Tress McNeil playing as Daisy Duck. We got Jessica De... Uh, De C is it Jessica DeSico? Yeah, I, 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 I'll just say, I'll, I'll just say it like that. Uh, we got Jessica DeSico playing the gender bent version of Huey, Dewey, and Louie, which are called April, May, and June. We also got D. Bradley Baker playing as my boy, the Araquan Bird, or as it says here, Ari the Araquan Bird and uh, Leopold the Terrible. We also got Wayne Knight appearing in here as Baron von uh, Sheldgoose. Uh, yeah, Baron von Sheldgoose. We also got Ke uh, Kevin Michael Richardson playing as Lord Feldrake Shel Shell Goose. And of course, J uh, Jim Cummings is also there where he Pete is actually going to be in this series as well. And also Thomas Lennon playing as uh, Clinton Coote. And uh, in this page, we also got uh, some official pictures of what some of the characters look like. And as you can see sh uh, showing here in some of these pictures, they are going back into the classic Disney style. And probably that's the one thing that I really do appreciate from this series is actually the fact that they are going back into the classic Disney look 
for this series right over here. Like, if you look into all the other series that does have the Disney characters, and you might have seen some people pointed this out on social media, that Donald Duck is now officially appearing in four animated series that are currently on television right now, or that are currently running, where you look at uh, the reboot of DuckTales, which is inspired by the Carl Barks design, and then you look into uh, the new Mickey Mouse shorts, which they have the Paul Ruddish design, and then you have the preschool shows, and probably you can count like the video games like Kingdom Hearts as well, where it has the uh, CG look, where Donald Duck is computer animated. But then you got here, where Donald Duck is back in that classic design that... Uh, we all grew up with and nowadays Disney hasn't really used much of that of that classic style outside of just merchandising and in theme parks so it's it, it, you know honestly I feel happy to see that they are going back with that style and then of course we also got some uh, new looks with other characters like uh, we got this picture right over here uh, which it features uh, April, May, June, and we also see the Aeroquan bird. And we got the new character, Zandra, the goddess of adventure. And may, may, uh, and I gotta admit, may I say, that's a fine looking girl we got right over there. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking around. Uh, no, she actually does look great, actually. And uh, uh, it is going to be interesting how she could actually be uh, a strong, prominent character within the uh, show. So uh, it could be interesting to see how they might go with it but uh, overall looking into uh, like what they're trying to do with the legend of the three caballeros um may i just say holy crap this looks freaking epic like honestly inside inside of me i am so freaking freaked out right now and i am excited about this thing right over here because you got to keep in mind if you guys are familiar with my videos if you guys are familiar with uh, the movies that i've talked about and stuff like that then you might remember that when i talked about my top 10 favorite animated films uh, or my top 10 favorite Disney animated films, one of them that I've put in is actually The Three Caballeros, because that's actually one of the animated films that I grew up watching. It was one of my favorite animated films watch, uh, just watching as a kid. And the fact that they are taking The Three Caballeros and bringing it to a whole new level, even though this is a reboot and it doesn't necessarily have a connection with the animated film itself it is still awesome to see donald jose and pachito you know they're all teaming up into and going into these epic adventures and if you guys have actually seen the intro it promises like a lot of these legends and finding off these really creative and intense bad guys it's um like they really did promise this as this show that's going to deliver epic adventures and that's the one thing that I really am excited about this about this show is the fact that you know we're having this epic series that uh, admittedly it does seem a little bit similar to what DuckTales uh, has done and what they're still doing right now. Um, you know, it still does, it, it, this actually does look like something that they're doing, they, they're copying a little bit of the DuckTales formula, but the fact that it is starring the three Caballeros back in their classic style, that is something that I really am excited about. So that's one thing is actually really cool about it. So honestly, yeah, I am definitely hyped up for this series right over here but there is one thing that i will say though that is a bit of a negative right over here and that and that is honestly i do feel really bad for disney right now because this week it must have been like a marketing nightmare for them because like technically we should oh, oh excuse me that, that's my my that's honestly my my lunch they want it wants to come back up and wants to make a comment about this but um uh, as i was saying though uh the thing is with the legend of the three caballeros like technically we shouldn't actually know about this we shouldn't actually know regarding about the legend of the three caballeros this should have still been a mystery to us while uh filipinos actually do have uh the opportunity to check them out themselves and um uh, honestly, it, it does seem like a bit of an emergency at Disney right now, especially the fact that people 
are spilling out everything about it. Like, yeah, sure. It started out, like, small where we first saw some pictures, but then it eventually grew into something that's more problematic where then we start to see... Um, like the intro coming out and then suddenly there was a clip that was released and that and nowadays we are starting to see people actually releasing uh, full-blown episodes on YouTube where people are actually releasing episodes of the three caballeros onto YouTube and that really is a bit problematic because it's not only is it something that Disney doesn't want you to know yet but it's also something that people are illegally doing in a way which they're technically pirating episodes of legend of the three caballeros and put them publicly online and putting on websites like youtube and even some of the illegal animated websites like uh, kiss cartoons and all that stuff that technically people should not go but they still go anyways uh but yeah that's kind of um, a really problematic situation regarding uh the three caballeros and i do feel bad for disney uh, going into a situation about, you know, going into something, like, really big and really crazy, like, th you know, this is not necessarily something that people should know right now, but considering that people are already uploading episodes in itself, I don't know what Disney's, I don't know what Disney's gonna do, but, uh, like, a, a lot of people are saying that, like, what people are expecting about this is that this is one of the exclusive animated series that they are preparing to put up on their upcoming streaming service. Like when that was going to be released, um, when that's going to be released at the end of, uh, well, not at the end, but late next year in 2019, they would also put up Legend of the Three Caballeros. Like at that point, then maybe we will see, like maybe they will actually make a formal announcement about it. But yeah, um, I I'm sure Disney is not having fun with the current situation that people are really starting to know about Legend of the Three Caballeros. And maybe I'm not doing a good job either. And maybe I'm just making things worse by talking about Legend of the Three Caballeros right now. But considering that it is one of the big things that people are talking about right now, it really does seem like it's the animated series that technically people shouldn't really know about right now. So, um... With all that said and done, I would like to ask you guys in the chat wall right now, what do you guys think about Legend of the Three Caballeros? Are you guys really excited about the series? Are you already watching episodes right now, like the ones that you can get on the internet? Um, what do you, you know, honestly, uh, what do you think uh, about the whole series in general and the whole situation with how... Uh, like, it's getting out of hand for Disney. I, I Honestly, I am curious to know. Uh, let's see. Uh, I love... Oh, okay. We see... Uh, apparently, people have already seen it. I loved it so much. Uh, it unfortunately happens. And like I said, internet users always learn things... Uh, always learn thi thing way to early than when it's supposed to be announced. Yeah. And I mean, like, it, it is true considering that... Uh, when it comes to the internet, like, they want things to come out yesterday. Like, when people are demanding something, they want to have something yet, like, I say they want something yesterday because the internet has no patience. The internet, like, they, honestly, they could be, like, they, they could be tired and, honestly, they just want something, like, in a snap. They want things, like, as soon as they first hear about it. Like, I even get comments from people asking me to review movies that are not out yet. Like, I know people want me to go and review Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but even at Sony right now, they're not done making it, so how the fridge can I review it right now? So, yeah, that, that's kind of the big thing. I, I do get where you're going. Uh, let's see. It's an idea and thought uh, wouldn't work, but surprisingly, it seems good. Uh, they should use the three caballeros right at Epcot to promote the series. That that could be an idea. That 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 actually could be an idea, considering that the three caballeros is in the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. Um, maybe they'll change something, but who knows? I mean, there is rumors right now that um, they could like redo the entire Mexico Pavilion and turn it into a Coco ride. Which honestly, even though I love the three caballeros, I would not. Uh, you know, honestly, I would not objectify to make an entire Coco ride. That would actually sound freaking amazing right there, but, uh, we'll, we'll see. 
All right, so uh, uh, apparently, uh, would you want to see this show? Yes, I, I definitely would. Oh my god, uh, that that would actually be really exciting. Honestly, I I cannot wait for for me like someone who loves the three caballeros. I want to see um, what they can do with Legend of the Three Caballeros. So definitely, I would um, definitely check this episode out. Uh, I know, but hey, why not more projects based on uh, the package films? You know, that is actually really true, you know. It, it, it does seem like uh, a pretty good idea, and it does have some potential if you can actually make something good out of the package films. I mean, technically, yes. Like, one of the most popular package films that Disney has done is The Three Caballeros, and some of the most memorable characters uh, outside of Donald is uh, Pachichos Pistoles and also Jose Carioca. So, why not go ahead? And, I mean, why stop there? Like... You know, it, it would sound like a pretty good idea, like, if they can continue that. Like, um, there's a lot of potential if they can actually make an animated series based on Mr. Toad. That can actually work very well. And, like, with the right people, they can make something great out of it. So, I think with that said, um, we, we're pretty much good with uh, the three caballeros. So, it's either, if you're impatient, then you can go and try to search it on the internet to look for the episodes right now. Or, if you are patient and you want to go with Disney's way, wait until it's actually announced and either they would put it up either on Disney Channel or if they put it up on their streaming service. Well, who knows? But, with all that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next story right over here, which, um, it's actually something that is very short. It's something that could actually be very quick. It'll just zip by that fast. And what I'm talking about is going to be a 30 second teaser trailer, which I am surprised it took them a little while for it to actually uh, appear, considering that it's been a while since we've actually had the pictures. But let's go ahead and look into our first teaser trailer and our first animated look onto Disenchantment. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out right over here. Oh, uh, hold on a sec. I just realized. Just need to go and, uh, uh, hold on, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, just want to make sure you guys can hear it as well. So, let's go ahead and get things started with, uh, the teaser trailer for Matt Groening's next animated series, Disenchantment. Uh, actually, I should hear this as well. I need to put up my headphones. All right, let's go. You've seen the future in Futurama. Yes. You've seen the present in Springfield. Yes. So, what's the obvious third move? The apocalypse! Yes, of course. Oh, okay. Welcome to Dreamland. Hear ye, hear ye! Royal Court is now in session! Ah, let's have a look at this no Like, already, Elfo looks like a green part, just like but you put that then, mask. Wow! Hi, Dad. Disenchantment, August 17th on Netflix. And that's pretty much it. I'm telling you, it, it was really short. But, um, yeah, there isn't really a lot about uh, this uh, animated series to talk about, considering there, there isn't a lot to say, considering that it literally is just a 30-second trailer. But I will say that the use of the computer animation at the beginning, like when you do look into uh the kingdom like when you look around dreamland i will admit like they did a great job right over here this actually does look great it actually does look immersive and it does look like uh, a classic medieval setting so the background i will give them credit and the use of uh, cgi they actually did pretty strong and uh considering that it is from uh, matt Groening's team and I, I will say that even on the series uh, Futurama, the use of computer animation is not too bad either onto there. Like, they actually know how to blend the uh, limited animation that they have with the characters and try to use uh, the computer animation to make that a little bit limited as well in order to have its style fit within the world of Futurama. And in here as well, we actually do see a lot more details, especially in the tilings of uh, the houses you know like considering that technology is a lot more advanced they are capable of making it a lot more detailed and stuff like that so uh, i i will give kudos to the uh computer effects team for actually making this and uh i i will say though li like i mentioned 
um, when the trailer was playing. Hold on. Oh, well, you don't get a good view. Here we go. Like, if you could see right over here, like, one of the characters, Elfo, like, now I'm really convinced this looks like freaking Bart. This is Bart in general. And even, like, the shape of the head is godforsaken Bart. Like, you put, like, you, you take off that mask, it's nothing but a green Bart who's somehow wearing these wooden shoes like he like he just came back from a trip to switzerland or something like that and, and I, honestly just looking at this it's like yeah it's kind of the same thing it's just uh godforsaken bart right over here but um yeah we don't really get a lot of uh characters right over here we don't get a lot of uh, character interaction like the main thing is just uh with the king you know like we got the king and then suddenly um, like, when we see the main character, like, she seems a little more sympathetic. So, like, we got, like, the, the, like we kind of, like, got this nasty king who rules with an ar uh, iron fist. And, um, what seems to be this girl who would often get herself into trouble. And, like, she seems a bit, uh, sympathetic right over here. Unlike the pictures that we have actually seen of Disenchantment, where we see her kind of like this Homer Simpson or more Bender type character where she's just sitting, where she's like sitting in the throne. She has like a beer in her hand and she just doesn't freaking care. Like she seems more pissed off than she actually does in the uh, teaser trailer right over here. But yeah, overall, uh, looking at this, it, it, it's like, it doesn't really give me enough information about uh the uh, it, it doesn't give me a lot of information regarding the series at the most it shows me how the animation is it gives us a little taste of how the animation is going to be with the the limited animation how the characters are going to look very uh simple you know pretty much sticking to the style of matt graining but i do see that there is a lot of uh, uh like a lot of a uh, use of colors where you do see a lot more browns and, and like I think it's really within the colors that you see there is a significant difference uh between like the other series like with Futurama and the Simpsons and stuff like that like when you do look at it you you do see a lot more uh different shades of grays and browns to emphasize uh the medieval setting and even uh like the sky it's not like fully blue but like it has a bit of a like it has a bit of that desaturated look to bring us back in time. So at least it gives us something there. So overall, it gives us a little bit of a hint about what is going on within the animation. And I think that's what the this uh, teaser trailer serves. Now, I don't know if Netflix is going to officially put out an official trailer about of uh, disenchantment to show us more about what the plot is going to be how it's going to be executed and especially with the humor i mean this is a comedy series this is from, this is from matt graining and i mean one of the reasons why people loved the simpsons and futurama is because of the of the series sharp wit and i think that's one thing that it's missing in this trailer is to see how the humor is going to go and that should be a really major selling point so i think honestly it should be probably for the best for netflix to go and release a, a you know to at least one big trailer to know how this series is going to go and i mean yeah sure technically it's going to be pretty soon that they are going to release um the series itself which is coming out on august 17th but honestly, I want to see a little bit more. If I want to make a better judgment, if I want to check out Disenchantment or not, I want to see a bigger trailer that explains how are they going to flow, how are they going to make the flow of the story, and how are they gonna go and uh, execute the humor. I think that should be a big part, and that should be one major thing. But with uh, with the uh, teaser trailer, with like even though it's just thirty seconds, we do have a little taste of how the animation is going to be with uh, the traditional 2D limited animation and with the computer animation. And I will say, like, in terms of the teaser trailer itself, it, it does do a good job setting, it, setting itself up as the next big Matt Groening series, but it doesn't really say a lot to me. So with all that said, I would like to pass on to the uh, chat wall right now. I want to know what you guys think 
of this teaser trailer of Disenchantment. What do you guys think about uh, like this 30 second trailer? Is it enough for you? Do you want to see a little bit more? Or is the teaser trailer so good that it really did get you to go and immediately go and check out Disenchantment? What do you guys think? How do you feel about the uh, teaser trailer for Disenchantment? Uh, I see, okay, one person is like, eh, it's okay. <laughs> well, I guess, uh, like, we got, uh, it's okay, nothing revolutionary. Uh, oh, um, indifferent, I'm not a fan of this type of show, but I won't hate on it. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so one person is still very excited for Disenchantment, but so far, uh, a lot of people, they're, you know, I, d I don't see anything too positive but I don't see any, like, I, I don't see any negativity on this series either. So a lot of people are like, ah. <laughs> I think, you know, that that's probably the best way to put it. Like if I could just make sounds, it's just, ah, you know, that, that that's so far the air that I'm so far feeling about this. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Simpsons literally made a scary maze game reference years later. Uh, the game's popularity died. Um, okay so uh i'm not 100 percent sure how this would relate well even though it's the simpsons but uh okay well uh, let's see i can't believe simpsons is still going and how matt hasn't uh gotten tired of it yet oh well well matt greening i'm sure he is tired of the series his like he is tired of the series itself but i'm sure he's not tired about getting all that money though I think that's the one big thing because if you've seen the paychecks that a lot of the people who worked on The Simpsons get, like my god, they are loaded. Especially like with the vo like the voice actors alone, like they're literally being paid like over a million dollars for every season. Like that's insane. Uh yeah, so let's see. Yeah, I won't watch it, but if people like it, good for them. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, and a lot of people seem to be pretty confused about it, but, yeah, a lot of people seem to be pretty indifferent, people are not 100% sure about it, but, uh, overall, it does look like, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that Netflix needs to bring out one more big trailer before the release of Disenchantment to show us a little more of Disenchantment. I think that would probably be for the best. Okay. So, moving right along to our next story. Unfortunately, um, we're going to go into something that is a little bit more serious. Now, uh, this is a little article that came out uh, discussing a bit of a dark side of what's going on within the animation industry. But because of this, um, it does make me ask a little bit more questions about not just this particular animation studio, but more what is going on within the whole animation industry in itself. And what I'm talking about is a variety article, which is called, if it can load, hold on, it's still loading. Okay, there we go. Uh, it is called, How Pixar's Open Sexism Ruin My Dream Job. And this is from a guest columnist by the name of uh, Cassandra Smolkick, uh, I think that's how you say her name, Small, Smallsick or Smolkick or something like that, from Cassandra. And she is actually a graphics designer. It says, uh, I think it mentions right at the end what she is doing now. Um, where, or did she say somewhere? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Um, it says like right at the end that Cassandra, uh, Cassandra Smolkick is a freelance graphic designer, photographer, and writer. She worked at Pixar from 2009 to 2014. This is adapted from a longer essay. And it was from uh, apparently medium.com where it's from a much bigger article. Hold on, I'll try to open this up. It's from uh, the website, yeah, medium.com. Uh, I believe, or it's from the section Be Yourself, where it's called the uh, Pixar Sexist Boy Club and my hashtag Me Too call for radical change. And in this article right over here, or at least the one in the uh, in the Variety article, it pretty much, uh, basically long story short, she pretty much discusses about her experience working at Pixar for those five years where she actually worked there during her second half 
of her 20s and when she was 30 she ultimately decided to leave because Pixar wasn't offering much opportunities for her and sadly what is going on in there is that because she is a young beautiful woman um, it actually kind of hinders her from any other opportunities like the men working at Pixar unfortunately they did not really see her for her talent she's not seeing the stuff that she is displaying for her as a graphic designer. They mostly um, were, uh, well, well I, I wouldn't say objectifying. I don't think that's the right word. Well, they, I, I think actually they were seeing her more as an uh, like a sexual object more than anything. And of course, she would go and mention about her relationship with John Lasseter. Well, not necessarily a relationship uh, on this thing. And... Um, uh, what what I mean more is that like how John Lasseter would treat her and other women as well that uh, a bit of his perverted side is um, really something that he cannot control and unfortunately it was something that Pixar uh, has to work around which is why she couldn't be able to be involved with any bigger projects why she couldn't really rise up to the ranks because of people like John Lasseter and that the men that are taking charge uh, they would go and easily get themselves on top while while the women have to stay in the backside. In fact, there was actually uh, one section right over here that is actually very interesting. Uh, yes, right over here. So I'm just going to read a little bit of what it says. Uh, when I received a perplexing performance review after finishing my fourth production, uh, it felt I'd never be equally recognized as a valuable asset by the company. The lengthy negative column listed things like designs too many options, seems like she's trying too hard, asks too many questions. Uh, when I shared the document with my candid male mentor, who openly acknowledged the culture of sexism at Pixar, he said, if you were a man, every one of those negatives would be in the positive column. Physically and mentally burnt out after years of bumping up against the glass ceiling, I left Pixar at age 30, hoping to find a workplace where I could genuinely thrive. So that was her only taste of uh, the animation industry and even though she is among like she was within one of the best companies out there unfortunately she did get a bit of a negative taste and uh, she also did comment about uh, the new the recent news about replacing John Lasseter with Jennifer Lee and Pete Doctor and uh, she even says the decision to replace Lasseter with Jennifer Lee and uh, Jennifer Lee at Disney and Pete Doctor at Pixar provides hope for meaningful changes moving forward. But dismantling John's legacy will take more than just replacing a single executive because such deeply ingrated biases require deliberate, uh, deliberate consent, uh, constituous effort to identify and dismantle. Now the one. Now first of all, I just want to say that. Uh, for those of you listening right now, uh, I highly do recommend that you go online and you go and read and check this article out for yourself or even go into the uh, longer one, which is uh, the Pixar's sex. Uh, what, what is it called again? I just want to just want to double check. Uh, yeah, Pixar's Sexist Boys Club uh, to go and read that article. I mean, it is a tough read, but it definitely is an important read that does open up the curtains to what actually is going on behind the scenes at Pixar. And uh, yeah, it is um, very unfortunate, but it is kind of a hard truth about what is going on. And, you know, it really does kind of suck that they are putting women on the side because it seems that the people at Pixar seems to be valuing a lot more of their own sexism and a lot more of their own perverted ways more so than the talents of women. And it really does suck the fact that women have to be on the wayside, that they have to be like kind of like they're the ones that are being punished. They're the ones who are getting, uh, you know, they, they, they're pretty much the ones that are getting the negative consequences to what, the guys have and you know it's not their fault and it really is unfortunate and how it does seem a bit um y you know it, it does seem a, a, a bit uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the right words here it really does seem unfortunate that women can't really thrive much within uh pixar and of course like in the article as well she would also mention about what like before all this happened, 
like the one clue of how this was happening at Pixar was the big controversy when Brenda Chapman was actually fired from Pixar from being the director of Brave and then replaced by a guy, which is Mark Andrews. So it has been something that has been a lot that that's been happening within Pixar for a long time. And um, I do congratulate Cassandra for actually stepping up and revealing this information. But there is one thing that I do want to comment, however. There is one thing that I do want to say about this entire situation. Now, of course, uh, for those of you that are very familiar with uh, the current scenario and what's been going on behind the scenes at Pixar ever since it was revealed that John Lasseter uh, has been a little bit perverted towards women, like, this is not the first time that this kind of story has been revealed. Like, there are several women that have experienced the same thing like what Cassandra just went through. But the one thing that it does make me wonder, okay, so now that we know what's been going on at Pixar, I would like to know what is going on within the other places in the animation industry. Like, here's the thing. I have received comments from other people regarding other studios. And, like, like I've got people from, like, desperate Sony defenders trying to say that, Oh, well, at least Sony is a great animation studio because they're not like Pixar and stuff like that. But I just want to say, absence of evidence does not mean evidence of... Wait, is, is, is that right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absence of evidence does not equal to evidence of absence. The thing is, Pixar is the only one that we really know what's going on behind the scenes because of the big controversy with John Lasseter. That doesn't mean we know, that doesn't mean it's perfectly fine in all the other studios because you keep in, you got to you got to keep in mind within the animation industry how people get their jobs it, it, like with artists and animators they don't just stay within one animation studio that's actually kind of rare normally what happens is that they would go and hop from project to project like they'll go work on a movie at um, illumination entertainment and then they'll go and make a few episodes at nickelodeon and then they'll jump at sony and then they'll jump at blue guy and then the, like they'll go all over the place so that's the thing and sometimes like there are pixar animators and there are animators at disney that sometimes like they're not going to stay there forever and sometimes they'll hop into different animation studios so my question is like what's been happening at pixar is it also happening in other studios are we seeing this sexism thrive within other studios like at dreamworks at illumination at sony at blue sky you know are we seeing those uh are we seeing this sexism happening in other animation studios and honestly i do have a feeling that yes this could be happening because we do actually have clues that we are hearing some stuff in other studios, especially like you got to think about it. The recent controversies, like it's not just John Lasseter that got caught in the hashtag me too movement. We also have um, Chris Savino, the creator of the loud house, which apparently he has been doing far worse stuff than John uh, throughout his career, working on television animation, like with cartoon network and especially with Nickelodeon and especially like when he grew to power, especially creating loud house, um, like he was, like he was at the highest peak before it was revealed of all the sexual harassments that he has done. And then you also got Dylan Brown, which he was about to make his directorial debut with Wonder Park at Paramount Animation. But then it was revealed that he was doing the same thing, uh, within, uh, Paramount Animations where he was, uh, being sexist and <laughs> he was acting a bit like a sexual predator towards women. So honestly... Like, now that we do have all the information of what's going on behind the scenes at Pixar, yes. Like, what happened during the time at Pixar, it was pretty bad under John Lasseter with all these, uh, sec you know, with all the sexist allegations and stuff like that. And at least we do know that Disney is doing something about it by completely replacing John Lasseter with Pete Docter and, uh, let's see, we got, uh, Pete Docter and, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think. Yes. With Pete Doctor and Jennifer Lee. Why the fridge did I forget about Jennifer Lee? Derp. And uh, yeah, I even see one comment right here. Like, yeah, like someone even says in the chat wall, uh, Sony Pictures Animation at least treats men and women equally. 
what how do you know like honestly are you honestly sure that this is legitimately happening are you honestly sure sony pictures animation is treating men and women equally are you sure there's not much sexism at sony pictures animation like i said absence of evidence does not equal to evidence of absence and i know that there are a lot of videos out there that you will find that they will show their animation studio as this oh this great wonderland and everybody is happy and everybody is treated equally and we're all friends here and we're so passionate of the projects that we are working on yeah i mean though like i'm just saying right now those videos are pretty much full of crap especially like those like especially if you find those videos that um like you would find on like the bonus features on dvds and blu-rays and um well let's see yeah like on uh dvds and blu-rays and then you also got like especially on their youtube channels like you'll find a lot of those that they will present them as a great studio and everybody is happy in there like that's the thing it's not necessarily true so that's the one thing that I would really like to know. So now that we know about Pixar, honestly, we should put the spotlight onto those other animation studios to see if there is sexism within Sony Animation, within Illumination, within DreamWorks, within Blue Sky, within all the within Cartoon Network or within uh, Nickelodeon, within all those studios. And yeah, yeah, of course, a lot of people. Oh, yes, and of course, of course, a lot of people mention about uh, John K. I mean, I don't know. John K. is like another story right there. I mean, that guy, like, he he put it to like a whole new freaking level. It's like, oh, God, like, like, it's like, it's, I don't even know if it would even count in the hashtag Me Too movement. Like, that isn't in the category, like, John K. is in the category of, like, what the fridge is wrong with you? You know, like, holy crap, that guy, like, that guy is, like, freaking insane, I swear to God. But, yeah, that's kind of the big thing that I would like to know is regarding what, like, now that we know what's going on behind the scenes at Pixar, yeah, <laughs> like, I even see in the chat wall right now, we do not speak about John K. <laughs> yeah, and especially, like, yeah, I, I know especially right now, considering that we are shifting uh, the credits to the creator of Ren and Stimpy, wh wh is it Ron? Like, do we, do we now consider Ron Crump as the, uh, as the creator of Ren and Stimpy? Is that the guy that I'm thinking of? I, j I just want to make sure, like, is it Roy Crump? Is it Ron Crump? I I, I just want to make sure. Uh, Chad Wall, can you correct me on that? Just want to just want to know, like, just want to get his name correctly. But that's kind of the big thing. Now, I know that there are a lot of animators out there who would be scared to expose what is actually going on behind the scenes, and from there. The, the, the thing is, is that if they do actually reveal some of the negative effects, uh, some of the bad stuff that is actually behind their animation studio. Yeah, uh, Bob, Bob Camp. Wow. Okay. So it is Bob Camp. So, okay. Wow. Uh, I, I was completely off uh, right there. Okay, yeah, Bob Camp. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Bob Camp, the new official creator of Ren and Stimpy. Okay, but anyways, as I was saying, that I know that there are going to be animators that are going to be absolutely scared to actually go and stand up for themselves and reveal what is actually going on behind the scenes. Because the thing is, if they do actually expose that not everything is perfect within the animation studio they're working on, then they're going to be pretty much blackmailed from the entire industry. So I understand that they are scared about it, but honestly, I feel like in this moment of the hashtag me too movement, we should seriously go put the spotlight, not just at Pixar, but also we should be more aware about what's going on with the other animation studios. You know, we should actually know about what's going on behind the scenes there to know if there is that same amount of Pixar sexism within their studios as well so that's honestly all that i'm asking about so with all that said and done um once again i just would like to highly recommend to go and read the variety article how pixar's open sexism ruined my dream job uh great work on the article cassandra and also i want to know in the chat wall what do you guys think about this entire situation how do you guys feel about what is currently going on like what what cassandra went through and sh you know honestly how do you feel about the other animation studios are you wondering as well if there is as much sexism there as much as there is pixar like wh what do you guys think i i would like to know honestly uh yeah okay yeah it's true 
I find it very sad. Brave, really brave. It's sad. Yeah, <laughs> sad. It's pretty much sad, of course. Um, yeah, it definitely is um, a sad situation. It, it really is. But I mean, at least there is a silver lining to know that Disney is uh, like, at least there is a, a silver lining to know that Disney is actually doing something about it. Uh, hold on. With the Brave Director thing, that director, the original one, might have just had bad ideas and just bad. I mean, yeah, you could, I mean, yeah, it definitely is true that you could make the argument rather if, uh, like, maybe she, maybe Brenda Chapman is a bit of an unqualified director at Pixar. Like, we don't fully know what is, uh, what did actually happen behind the scenes, but considering the, uh, the open sexism within the studio, it's not looking good on Pixar's side, and, like, at this point, we don't know if, um, if really, if it, it, it like, we honestly, like, at this point, like, we cannot say that sexism doesn't play a part within there, so who knows? Uh, I wouldn't fret about this too much. After all, good changes is just around the corner. Yeah, yeah, uh, Poke, yeah, exactly, Poke Nut Case. You're, you're definitely, you know, honestly, that is a great positive outlook. So, um, there are going to be some good changes. And, uh, you know, with the with the hashtag Me Too movement, we are seeing more positive outcomes coming for from it. And we are seeing, um, you know, honestly, we are seeing some more positive changes. We are seeing women that are getting a bigger voice in here. So that could be a major case. So yeah, uh, that is, uh, definitely what is going on within, uh, the whole Pixar situation. And hopefully it will shed the light on what's going on in other animation studios as well. And so with all that said, let us now go ahead and go into the grand finale. Yes, I got one big grand finale, which honestly I feel more is like a, a bit more of a discussion piece. But this definitely was something that people have talked about so much. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa, what the fridge? Oh, what's up? Longtime fan here. How did how did I not know you were streaming on tw on Twitch yet? I have failed you, senpai. Don't worry, Boogie. Don't worry. It's all good. It's all good. I mean, you did make it. It's perfectly okay. But anyways, with all that said, um, yes, I do have a little bit of a discussion piece. And what I'm going to talk about is something that it really did explode on social media. And a lot of people have been discussing about it rather if they enjoyed it or if not or if they're trying to understand what is even going on so i'm sure that a lot of you watching this have actually seen incredibles 2 but what i want to talk about is not incredibles 2 what i would like to know right now i just want to ask the people on the chat wall uh what did you guys think of the animated short bow I, I, I can wait. I want to know, what are your initial thoughts? What did you think about Bao? I, I want to hear. I want to hear, what did you think about it? I, I, I want to see. I, I, I like Just give me your initial reactions. Don't, don't hide it out. Okay, so... Okay, I, I see a lot of people... Okay, they think it's okay. They think it's adorable. Okay, so... People like it. Okay, I like Bao. Okay, so... They, like, I see people, they say... They like... They... They say they like it, they think it's okay, so, okay, yeah, it, it was weird at first, but I liked it overall, so, yeah, Bao was sweet, but, uh, yeah, the obvious, well, okay, I'm gonna continue from there, so, yeah, a lot of people liked it, a lot of people say it is okay, so, with all that said, let us now go ahead and, uh, discuss about, uh, the news about the story about the big discussion what the fridge is with bow the po yes um there is an article from po uh what, what's the website again polygon yeah from polygon the polarized reactions to pixar's bow are rooted in culture so initially, there are a lot of people, of course, they did discuss about how awesome Incredibles 2 is. Like, a lot of people really did enjoy it, and you know? But then they would also go and discuss about 
bow and there have been a lot of reactions and yeah the short itself is a bit of an emotional roller coaster now uh before i go and uh, before i go and uh, continue i just want to give you guys a little bit of a warning though that I'm about to go and discuss about the entirety of the animated short bow. That means I am going to go and discuss about spoilers. So I am going to be revealing everything about what has been going on within the animated uh, short. So if you guys want to go and avoid spoilers, if you don't want to know, if you haven't seen it and you don't want any spoilers right now, let me just say, go home. J just leave right now. Go home. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is just a bit of uh, a warning, so uh, you just go and uh, if you don't want any more spoilers, then just uh, take a step back. So with all that said, uh, now that we do have that, let's go and uh, actually continue with talking about Bao. Okay, so the thing is, if you, go, if you don't know, this is the story about... Uh, a chi about this Chinese family where they immigrated from China and uh, now they're living in Canada and the mother she was making her dumplings and then suddenly she ate one and suddenly it came to life and from there she was pretty much raising this dumpling like her son and from there there is starting to be a bit of family drama where now he's becoming more of a teenager and he's being a little bit more rebellious and then soon afterwards, there was one moment where uh, the dumpling came back and he brought this white girl and she showed her the ring saying that she's engaged, apparently. The dumpling engaged with a white girl. What the fridge? So then he decided he's going to go and leave home. And the mother said no, she didn't want him to leave. And then right afterwards, probably the most controversial and shocking moment, she ate him. She just took the son, she had enough, and just flat out ate him. But then afterwards, like after she regretted the whole situation, we then see the son come back, but it's not a dumpling, it actually is the real son, where they do have a tender moment to reconnect, and then they all live happily ever after. So that's pretty much the whole situation of Bao. And, um, well, okay, maybe I didn't, uh, I didn't really kind of, uh, it's kind of like summarize it up the best way, but that is a good summary of what Bao is about. Where you got this mother and throughout the whole time she sees this dumpling as her son and kind of grew up with him. And then afterwards the real son came in. Uh, but a lot of people really did have some mixed reactions to it. Where you got some people, they immediately fell in love. They were crying at the animated short while others were just absolutely confused and just fully shocked at what they just saw about how a mother would just raise this dumpling kid only to end up eating him when she was just too angry. And that's probably the most memorable aspect about uh, this animated short, rather it be for good or for bad, is the moment where the, mo where the Chinese mother ended up being so pissed where she was just fed up with all the stupid shenanigans with her dumpling son that she just ate him right after he decided he's going to move out with this white girl that he just engaged. So that's kind of the big thing. Like, people were just absolutely shocked. And the reactions, well, as you could tell, like, a lot of people loved it and a lot of people were shocked. But the, lo but the thing is, is that you see some people where they seem to be a bit confused and when they express when people did express their confusion about what they just saw the people that do like it they were pretty much mad they were as mad as the chinese mother in the short where like we even saw one tweet that just shouted at someone saying this wasn't made for you and um and there's also another tweet that says i watched incredibles 2 in napa during the short the white folks around me wouldn't stop laughing and talking about how stupid this short is while I was over there experiencing my relationship with my mother in 10 minutes or 7 minutes or 8 minutes. Usually animated shorts are not often that long. I think this one is just 8 minutes, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, th that's kind of the big discussion about what happened with this 
animated short is it heartwarming is it confusing and it really is kind of polarizing up to the point where yeah it is starting to frustrate people and for this one what i want to do is that i, I want to try to talk about both sides about both their point of views because i honestly when i first saw this animated short i did experience both because when you got the first part um yeah it does seem kind of weird it do, you know honestly it does seem like it is something that it is hard to take seriously considering that you got this kid that is made of dumplings and then you see the serious drama between him and his mother while it's still a freaking dumpling where he's still going around like eating chips hanging out with friends and especially one of the weirdest things for me is the fact that like he came in with this white girl and he managed to get to engage her like how the fr like what does that girl see in that dumpling it's literally a freaking dumpling what the fridge is that and i mean to speak to those to speak for those people that were absolutely confused about what they saw with bal i just want to say that when it comes to many of them a lot of those people really were not prepared for bal in general they were not ready to go see this animated short about a mother and her dumpling son. Because the thing is, those audiences were ready to go see Incredibles 2. Because that's the whole setup of what's going on. You know, when they were driving to the movie theater, when they buy their ticket, when they're getting their seats, when they're buying their popcorn and all that stuff, they were ready to go see Incredibles 2. Too. that's the big thing that they want to go and check out and even like i'm sure there are a lot of cinemas i'm sure that even you guys actually got that where there was this major opening from samuel jackson craig t nelson holly hunter and brad bird where they all made this big thing saying that we're sorry that it took so long we know it took 14 years to make an incredible sequel we just want to say thank you for your patience and now without further ado here is incredibles 2 and then suddenly they would immediately start with this animated short with Bao. And like, it, it, it's something that feels like, yeah, they, it really came out of left field. So they were pretty much mentally preparing themselves to see Incredibles 2, but then they suddenly got this. And even if people already know mentally that there's always an animated short before uh, a Pixar movie, they weren't ready to see what to expect they weren't ready to see something like this actually happen and honestly yeah like when you're ready to go see incredibles 2 you were definitely not expecting to see an angry chinese mother an angry chinese mother eating her son who is made of dumplings that just engaged to a girl and he was ready to move out nobody was ready for that and some people could not wash off the shock even like immediately afterwards when the big twist when the big reveal was actually shown and like some people would still be shocked even like during the opening of Incredibles 2 itself like when we see like the interview between Rick Dicker and Tony Reidinger you know that was still you know that was something that like it, it was something that came out of left field and they don't know how to feel about it they were not prepared to actually see that moment right there but I will say um going back into my personal experience about bow yes even though it is hard to take it seriously and it was really weird to see the dumpling growing up i will say though everything pretty much changed when you do see the real son step in when you actually do see the real son uh going into his uh mother's bedroom and he has like those box of, he has like that box of donuts and um like you actually see him in human form where that is like something that and for me when i first saw that that was something that like it immediately clicks like oh the sun is real oh god that means like everything that happened is actually real like what happened it like what happened with that dumpling sun actually did happen where like that that was actually the real mother and son relationship with the exception of her eating her son and all that stuff okay that part didn't happen but um but that you know that's kind of like the whole thing 
And, and you know, like, it's all actually, like, that's where it clicked, where it was all a metaphor to present her relationship with her son. And I remember in my second viewing, uh, when I saw it a second time, uh, I actually looked carefully in the backgrounds and stuff like that, and there was actually little hints that this relationship did happen. If you look closely at the pictures in the background, you would actually see, like, family photos of her and her son when he was growing up and stuff. Like, you actually do see that happen in real time. So, when we did get that update, and then, like, following afterwards, like, you see him with that box of donuts trying to reconcile after everything that happened, and you do see that tender moment where, like, you see the son and the mother, they were both eating donuts, and they were crying at the same time, which I will say definitely is one of the most heartwarming moments in a Pixar short. Like, they really did capture that well. And I guess, like... It really does depend on some people. Like I said, like, there are some that cannot get that shock uh, of, like, seeing Vor in a Pixar short uh, out of their minds and they couldn't see, like, what's in front of them. But honestly, like, it really does make sense. Like, honestly, I do get what this animated short was going on. Yeah, it's weird at first, but when we do see what was happening right afterwards, like, I do get it. I do see the theme of motherhood and I do see the direction that uh, director Domi Shi was trying to go with it. And honestly, I do feel like she did a, a great job showing uh, the story of motherhood in this case. And honestly, uh, this is why I really do feel excited for when the Blu-ray of uh, Incredibles 2 would come out. Now, usually Pixar would release it during the holiday season or at the earliest uh, they would put it out in early November. And honestly, I'm really excited for when that would come out. Because honestly, for all those people who are still really confused about Bao, if they still don't get it, I want them to actually go and get that Blu-ray of Incredibles 2. Because number one, it's Incredibles 2, it's a really good movie, and they should, uh, they should have it in their collection anyways. But the biggest reason is because they would be capable to actually get the Blu-ray or get the DVD or whatever and they'll be able to put it on and they can actually select to go and check out the animated short. That way, they'll be able to be mentally prepared to see what they're about to see. That's kind of the big thing with Bao. And that's the big thing with these uh, Blu-rays and DVDs is that it'll give them the option so that now they'll actually be ready to go and see what it is. And since they've already seen it in theaters, they'll be able to go check it out at home. They'll know what's going to be coming up. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a, a little dumpling boy coming to life inside my stomach. No, <laughs> just kidding. No, but the thing is, is that they'll go and actually check it out to see, like, what it's about. Like, now they can mentally prepare themselves, they know what's going to be happening, and they can go and be ready for what's coming up. They'll be ready to understand what Bao will be. So, honestly, I think that's going to be uh, the biggest thing that I can recommend, is just wait until the Blu-ray and DVD or digital, like, wait for it so, so that it can be out on home media, so that those people who don't get Bao, they'll go and get it, and they will go and check it out, and they'll be ready for it. They'll be ready for what's going on so that they can pay closer attention to what's going on, and they'll be ready to understand it more. So, honestly, that is my big uh, comment right there. That's honestly how I feel with the whole Bao situation. There are some people that are quick about it and they do understand what is happening with the animated short and others, well, they kind of need time and they need a bit of rewatching to understand the whole scenario. I mean, yeah, like I do agree. It does seem really weird to see this dumpling boy come to life only to end up being eaten by his mother. But at the end, but honestly, um, you know, like, that's the thing. Like, for those of you, um, who don't get it, you just need to give it a chance. You need to understand what this is about. And I see already one comment, uh, but if you dislike something, why should they want to watch it again? I'm not saying, like, the, the, the thing is, is that, like, the people who are shocked at it, it's not that they didn't like it. I, I'm not saying, like, if you don't like it, please watch it again in order to understand it more. I, I'm talking about those people 
who are confused. It like for those people who still don't know how to feel, if the shock is still in them about what they've just saw with Bao, then at that point they should try to watch it again. Like try to watch it without the shock. That's all I'm asking is if they would be capable to watch this without the shock and then try to create a, a, a you know, like a, a concrete thought about what it is. So that's honestly my little piece. So uh, I'm going to go into the chat wall right now, right now once again and ask them, uh, what do you guys think about the animated short Bow? I'm going to ask you again, but now uh, considering the stuff that we have talked about, considering the stuff that's within the animated short, what did you think? Um, the thing is, uh, like, do you understand it a little more? Uh, do you think people should give it a second chance after the shock? Do you think it's more shock than it is good? Or, well, what do you guys think overall of the thing? Uh, Bao is heartwarming, but with, uh, a darker ending. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so, apparently one person, okay, so apparently one person didn't like it. Um, okay, let's see. Honestly, about Pixar, uh, honestly, about Pixar films, people should know about the shorts before going into the theater, so maybe doing a little bit of research. But honestly, even with research, I don't think people would be mentally prepared to see that shocking scene of, like, a mother eating her dumpling son. Just saying. Nothing can prepare you for that. Uh, I read about the backstory behind it before I saw the shorts, so when the scene happened, I was shocked, but I completely understood and felt the feeling. Uh, let's see. I always understood the shorts since its first viewing. Still love the short. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Since Incredibles 2 has the highest animated opening, that means the short technically has the highest animated short opening. Well, I guess. Well, I mean, like, it does show that, yes, there are a lot of people out there that actually did see the animated short that that is definitely what it means uh let's see uh do you it's all right is that, well that's oh do you think it's like olaf's frozen adventure uh absolutely not no olaf's frozen adventure it's more its own thing that that's like a completely other story considering that's a television special that they put in front of a movie that that's like a completely other thing in its, uh, entirely, in, in, in its entirety, I mean. Uh, let's see, I think Pixar should do more serious subject matter. I think animated films in general, or short, animated films and shorts in general should go into more serious subject matter. That would actually be amazing, actually. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, you know what, with all that said, I think we should all be good by now, and I should actually be leaving soon. So, uh, with all that said and done, that's going to be it with this episode of, uh, Animat's Crazy Cartoon Cast, so I just want to say right now, thank you guys so much for watching, and tune in next time, where I'm going to be covering more crazy stories and news in the animation world, so with all that said, I just want to say once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you later, dudes!